Hello. So today we're going to talk to you about calorimetry. Right here I have in my hands a calorimeter. And what you can see is that this is a closed system in which a chemical reaction happens. And what we measure is we measure the temperature of the change of the system. And from there we can calculate the molar enthalpy of the chemical reaction. So a calorimeter is a closed system and that's very important to have because if you don't have a closed system your heat's going to leave and then all of a sudden you're not going to be able to calculate the change in temperature and it's not going to be able to calculate the molar enthalpy of the solution. Okay, This is based on the first and second law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics being energy cannot be created or destroyed. So the chemical reaction has a chemical reaction and the energy has to go somewhere. So in the calorimeter it goes into the solution which we assume is water in the calorimeter. Uh, the second law of thermodynamics is the idea that heat is going to flow from hot to cold. So if the reaction is hotter than the water, the reaction is going to give its energy to the water, increasing the temperature. So an exothermic reaction is going to increase the heat of the system. And the same way, if the, if the reaction is colder, the heat from the water is going to go directly into the reaction, being an endothermic reaction, and it's going to feel a change in temperature being colder. So in this regard, we can think of a calorimeter as the change in the enthalpy of a reaction giving off a change in temperature, a change in heat, which is a change in potential energy is equaling a change in kinetic energy. So how we can calculate that are the calculations we can use are NHM, so the number of moles multiplied by the molar enthalpy is equal to the negative mass multiplied by the heat capacity of the solution in the calorimeter multiplied by the change in temperature, or NHM equals negative mc delta t. Okay, from there, what you need to note is that you need to know the amount of chemicals that are actually reacting. So the chemical amount and over here for the heat change, we need to know the mass which is equal to the number of milliliters or grams in the solution. You need to know the heat capacity of the solution present in the calorimeter. And for Chem 30, we're always going to use solution heat capacity as 4.19, which is the heat capacity of water. And then the temperature change being in degrees Celsius as final minus initial temperature. So we're going to note all those things in order to calculate the molar enthalpy of the reaction. The molar enthalpy is going to be the experimental molar enthalpy, and later on we're going to calculate the theoretical, and we can compare the efficiency of our calorimeter using those two numbers. Now some assumptions that we're going to make in calorimetry is that we're going to assume that this calorimeter is a perfectly closed system. So we have to assume that in our calorimetry in order to calculate the molar enthalpy. We also have to assume if you're using a styrofoam cup, which a lot of people are going to use in a calorimeter or a simple calorimeter because it's cheap and it's easy to find, we assume that styrofoam does not take in any heat. So we don't need to know the the heat capacity of styrofoam, we don't have to take into account the heat capacity of the thermometer, we don't have to take into account the heat capacity of the stir, we just assume the calorimeter is one system and all the energy goes directly into the water, so nothing else has a heat capacity. We also assume that the volume of water and the mass of water is exactly the same and that we're using water at all times, that the solution has a heat capacity of water and not necessarily slightly altered due to the ionic compounds in the salt or the solution. Okay, so for our first example, when 50 milliliters of a 1.0 mole per liter solution of sodium hydroxide with an initial temperature of 17.4 is mixed with 50 milliliters of one molar hydrochloric acid, the initial temperature being 24.2, what is the molar enthalpy change for the neutralization of the base? So the first things first, what we need to know is we need to know what we're dealing with as a chemical reaction. In this case, we're dealing with the neutralization of the sodium hydroxide. So our number of moles present is 0 0.05 liters, which is that 50 milliliters, multiplied by the 1.0 mole per liter solution. So we have our number of moles, and we know that we're trying to figure out the molar enthalpy of the neutralization of the sodium hydroxide. How we're going to measure that is we're going to deal with the change in temperature of the solution present. Remembering that it's the total solution, so we have to use 50 milliliters of hydrochloric acid as well as 50 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide present in that calorimeter. So you're actually going to end up with 100 milliliters of solution or 100 grams. We also assume that the heat capacity of the solution is 4.19, being water, because this is aqueous solution and aqueous solutions have a 
water content, enough that we're just assuming that it's 4.19. Finally, we need to assume the change in temperature is between 20.8 and 24.2. How I got that 20.8 was I find the average between the 17.4 and the 24.2. The reason for that is the heat capacity is the same, and we're adding the same number of milliliters, so it's going to meet in the middle, no matter what. Okay, so our change in temperature is from, it's going to go down from 24.2 to 20.8. All we do from there is we're going to use our handy dandy calorimeter equation, which is the change in potential energy is going to be equal to the negative change in heat. Okay, so we're going to plug in those numbers as 0 0.05 liters, multiply by that one mole per liter, and then we don't know our molar enthalpy. That's what we're trying to figure out. And then over here we're going to have 100 grams of solution. Multiplied by that 4.19 joules per gram degree Celsius. Multiplied by the change in temperature, which is 20.8 minus 24.2. Okay, so if you notice what units cancel out, our liters cancel out, leaving us with moles over here. Our grams cancel out, and our degrees Celsius cancel out. So if we're to move the moles over to the other side and divide by those moles, our molar enthalpy is going to end up being 28,492 joules per mole. Okay, the temperature is going down. So the final temperature is 20.8, which means it's going down, which means the reaction is endothermic. That is why this guy's a positive number. So it's endothermic reaction. It's 28.492 joules per mole. So an endothermic reaction. We'll write that in there as well. Okay, so example number two says, when excess zinc is added to a 50 milliliter solution of a 0.25 mole per liter aqueous copper 2 sulfate, the calorimeter warms by 12.5 degrees Celsius. What is the molar enthalpy of the reduction of the aqueous copper 2 ions? So the first thing you need to notice is that the temperature in the calorimeter goes up meaning you have an exothermic reaction, which means your molar enthalpy should be negative. So you can realize that if you did something wrong, it should be a negative. So that's just a nice little check. The second thing you need to realize is that your zinc reaction with copper 2 plus sulfate, the zinc is excess. That means 100% of your zinc actually reacts with your copper 2 sulfate. So your copper 2 sulfate is your limiting reagent. So that's what you're going to use in order to determine the number of moles. Okay? So over here I mentioned that 0 0.05 liters multiplied by the 0 0.25 mole per liter solution is our number of moles of zinc. Okay? We're going to determine the molar enthalpy of the reaction and our total solution present is 50 milliliters. That zinc is solid so it doesn't matter in the solution part. Still, again, our heat capacity is 4.19, and our temperature change is plus 12.5 degrees Celsius. So if we plug this into the equation, we have 0 0.05 liters multiplied by that 0 0.25 moles per liter. And again, we're solving for molar enthalpy. We have a negative mass of 50 grams multiplied by 4.19 joules per gram degree Celsius and we have a heat change of 12.5 degrees Celsius. <clears throat> so again, our liters cancel out, leaving us with moles on this side, and our grams cancel out, and our degrees Celsius. Meaning we have, when we move this moles per liter, or moles over, we're going to have joules per mole, which is our molar enthalpy measurement. So when we calculate it all out, you're going to end up with negative So we have negative 500 joules per mole, which means if you calculate it and you need to divide it by 1,000 to turn it into kilojoules per mole, you're going to end up with 209.5 kilojoules per mole of energy. And that's an exothermic reaction because it's negative, which means it's going to heat up the solution, which is exactly what happened. 
chemists use bomb calorimeters instead of just regular old calorimeters. The reason for that is because they're really, really technical. Usually they're made out of titanium, they're an extremely closed system, and it's easy to handle everything. So it's very exact. If you were testing a bomb, obviously you'd put it in a bomb calorimeter to stay safe from the explosion that's going to happen. So a bomb calorimeter, what it takes into effect is it still calculates the molar enthalpy of your reaction, however it just takes into effect the heat capacity of that bomb calorimeter, of the solution involved, of the masses, of everything. So what actually happens as you use a bomb calorimeter is that you get a negative capital C delta T. The capital C is the heat capacity of the bomb calorimeter. So that takes into effect all the temperature changes, all the heat capacities of everything, and they give you that calculation, and then you can just omit the mass present, and you just use the temperature change. This has not been on the diploma in seven years that I've taught. So obviously it's not really that important to remember. Usually you'll be given a mass of water or a solution in there, so you'll be able to use the regular old heat capacity formula um, however, if you're given a, a bomb calorimeter question and you're given a weird bomb calorimeter heat capacity, you're going to use this NHM equals capital C delta T. That capital C delta T, again, is the heat capacity of the bomb calorimeter. Okay, so it's exactly the same type of calculations, it's just the negative C takes into account all those heat capacities, all those masses, and you don't have to worry about that weird calculation in the end. Okay, so more often than not, an example of a bomb calorimeter will be an exothermic, extremely explosive reaction. So our first example says, consider a one gram sample of benzoic acid burning in a bomb calorimeter. The initial temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, and the heat capacity of the calorimeter is 5.43 kilojoules per degree Celsius. The combustion causes the temperature of the calorimeter to rise 29.86 degrees Celsius. Using this data, what is the molar enthalpy of the combustion of benzoic acid? So again, it's exactly the same system. We have one gram of benzoic acid burning over here. So our heat capacity doesn't matter right now. We're just talking about the benzoic acid. We have one gram of it burning, and in order to turn that into moles, we're going to divide by the molar mass, which is 122.13. We know we're still looking for that molar enthalpy, so we're still looking for how much energy is given off because of that chemical reaction. The only thing that's different than a regular uh, calorimeter question is the fact that we have this weird heat capacity of 5.43 kilojoules per degree Celsius. And our temperature change is 29.86. So what do you notice about that? That's a positive number, which means that your reaction is exothermic, so it should be negative in the end. So all we're going to do is we're going to plug in those numbers in our fancy new bomb calorimeter formula, and we're going to figure out the heat, the molar enthalpy. So we have our number of moles, we multiply that by the HM, which is the molar enthalpy, which is what we're solving for. We have this negative 5.43 kilojoules per degree Celsius, and our heat change of 29.86 degrees Celsius. So if you notice, we don't have those joules per gram degree Celsius, or kilojoules per kilogram degree Celsius, we just have kilojoules per degree Celsius, which immediately cancels out when we multiply it by the temperature, and we have moles over here. So we'll divide by the moles, and we're ending up with a molar enthalpy of negative 3,222 kilojoules per mole. So it's an extremely exothermic reaction, and it's releasing a lot of energy to heat up that water by 29.86 degrees Celsius. Heat up the whole calorimeter. A little bit easier, not very often used. So that's all I have for you today. That's all calorimetry. And I hope you enjoyed what you just learned. I hope you can use it. And I hope you can pass your diploma and do awesome in chemistry and go on to be a brilliant chemist and say thank you, Miss Moke, one day.